Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We try to keep it tasteful each and every week, but discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva. Ready, hot, and loud. We're turning up the heat and heading high above the fields and forests. Hold on tight as we set out on a hot air balloon ride. Then it doesn't always take a guide or even gear just to get outdoors. Captain Willie takes us on a walking tour of one local piece of public land where there's a wild world to explore. <laughs> and these guys and gals might look like a blast from the past, but their shooting sport isn't about to go up in smoke. Spend time at the range with the top tank muzzle loaders. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Hi everybody and thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. <laughs> High flying edition. I'm Mike Parker and uh, well you can tell where Captain Willie Dykes is. He's just up above me in chopper 16. We have quite an adventure this week. As you can see, uh, I'm doing something that I've always wanted to do. Finally got a chance thanks to our friends at Del Marva Balloon Rides to take off from just outside of Ridgely, Maryland, and we've been hovering here at about 1,500 feet in this gorgeous brand new hot air balloon, just taking in the sights. And I'll tell you what, there is no better way to get outdoors Del Marva. How do we get up here? Great question. Well, good thing I brought my camera with me because I'm going to show you right now. Take a look. The first thing you should know about going on a hot air balloon ride is it's best to get up early. We're going to try to take off maybe about 15 minutes after sunrise. That's when the winds are most light and favorable for flying. It is nice to see the sunrise coming up from the balloon. All right. Todd Davis is the owner and operator of Delmarva Balloon Rides and asked us to meet him at about 5 a.m. at Ridgely Airfield in Caroline County, Maryland, where a pretty elaborate setup began. First step is to set up the large wicker basket we'll be riding in and test its propane torch because realistically, if it doesn't work, well, there's no point in going any further. Ready, hot, and loud. Next, it's time to set the balloon up, starting by removing it from a large sleeping bag-like sack, then stretching it out across the field. Todd's friend, Nick Manthos, along with Hank Draper, will work as a team to keep the nylon material flat until it's time to fire up a generator and blast air into the skirt of this 105,000 cubic foot balloon. This is where we let the heat out if we need to. Now the simple science at work here is that heat rises. Ready? So as Todd blasts a flame into the balloon, it heats the air, expands the material, and lifts it right off the ground. And eventually, us too. Well, I guess we're preparing for, uh, what do you call it, liftoff, Todd? That's correct. <laughs> All right, so here goes nothing. Let's do it. Within just a few minutes, Todd, myself, and Hank are floating off. <laughs> while Nick follows us in a recovery vehicle below. And thanks to a timely arrival by Chopper 16, you'll be seeing this adventure from both my perspective in the basket and Captain Willie's from his cockpit. This looks like a near perfect morning for a hot air balloon ride here on Del Marva. And my buddy Mike Parker has a ticket for a flight out of Ridgely in Caroline County. Part of the fun of flying in a balloon is the ability to change elevations. So we can easily hang out at 1,500 feet and see for miles around or possibly my favorite part of the trip, hovering just above the treetops, low enough to even grab a quick souvenir. Watch this move. <laughs> Good morning, Mike. Uh, how did how does Del Marva look this morning? Well, it's absolutely beautiful. You're not going to believe it, but uh, I just picked a leaf off the top of a tree. <laughs> Most striking about the ride is the chance to see things from a whole new perspective. An unobstructed view, great for taking pictures. And if you're comfortable in the basket, just relaxing and taking in the beauty as you float nearly silently 
above the world beneath you. Hey, honey, just wanted to say hi from a uh, hot air balloon. It's pretty amazing. Words can't describe, I guess. Take a look. Hot air balloon operators require a pilot's license and typically have years of flying under their belts. But all the experience in the world can't change the fact that every flight is going to be different. I think we're looking at Holly Road. And each flight is also accompanied by the unpredictability of just how far you'll travel and where you'll be able to land. Maybe Cedar Lane. I'm going to land in the field right next to Cedar Lane, Nick. After about 45 minutes in the air, Todd is ready to put her down. For the rest of you aviators out there, this is what it looks like when a balloon is on final approach. But as we make our approach, the timing is just off, and we'll maintain our elevation a little bit more until we see another suitable stop. Perfect landing spot, I'm happy. Well, after just a few minutes, another landing spot fits our needs, where we should be able to put the balloon down gently and allow Nick to drive right up to us in the recovery vehicle. Yeah, look at that, right next to the road. That's cool. What the hell, he's going to put it right on the road. <laughs> it is a beautiful landing as Nick steadies the basket and the balloon slowly deflates as we go from passengers to crew, now helping to fold up the balloon right here on the road and stuffing it back gently into its case. Now ready for its next flight, sure to be someone else's experience of a lifetime. Well, I want to thank the guys from Delmarva Balloon Rides for helping me check something off the bucket list this morning. The entire experience was just great. Make sure you check them out at DelmarvaBalloonRides.com. We'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, you don't need a guide or a license or any gear, just you. Right Captain on. Willie takes us on a tour of some local public land. We'll have blueberries and little blossom. But first, did you know? The nylon material that makes up the bulk of a hot air balloon isn't very strong at all. It's another component that allows it to withstand such internal pressure. What is it? The answer, when we come back. Outdoors Delmarva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice. And Goody's Marine. Outdoors Delmarva will be right back. Did you know? The nylon material that makes up the bulk of a hot air balloon isn't very strong at all. It's another component that allows it to withstand such internal pressure. What is it? The fabric itself only takes about five pounds of pressure. It's the Kevlar lines that go all the way to the top that control all the, they take all the pressure from the lift. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, every week my buddy Mike Parker and I keep advising you folks to get outdoors. And I hear you saying, but fellas, I don't have the gear. I don't have the license. I can't afford the fees, much less a guide. Well, we hear you folks, and there's an app for that. Now, as far as foot gear is concerned, I want to take advice from an old Indian friend. They said, wear what you want and just watch where you put your feet. There are 135,000 acres of wildlife management areas scattered all over the peninsula. They're also great for hikers, explorers, and aimless wanderers like me. Any patch of open, clear ground that you pass has a little story on it about what went on and who was here the night before. Right there we have a, a few fox tracks. There's a where a rabbit stopped for a minute. Looks like he must have been there a little bit after the fox went by. He was sitting on his hind leg. That's his hind legs and his uh, uh, his foot and his front feet are right there. So his two hind legs are there and his two front feet. It looks like a many-legged bug. 
was coming across here. A big one with uh, several legs was making his way across here. And this is some, this is some kind of a, a crawler. And here's a place where a turkey was showing off. See his footprints here? Okay, and over here, these striated marks here are where he was dragging his wings. When he fluffs his tail out, and sticks his wings down, he drags them along the ground. So a tom turkey was showing off, strutting along the road here. The plant world along the road here shows off a spring display of flowers and new growth and holds a promise of exotic treats coming later in the summer. These white blossoms here are blackberry blossoms and all these vines in here, right around the 4th of July, maybe a little later, will have blackberries on them, right next to the road, pretty close at hand. Again, right along aisle number one, we'll have blueberries and little blossoms there. Later on, about midsummer, there'll be blueberries to pick here. Now, you have to get here as soon as they get ripe. Everybody likes a blueberry, so you have to compete with uh, a lot of different wildlife to get here in time to get some. Now, this is a real treat to find in the forest in Delmarva. It's a little orchid called a lady slipper. Here's a hint, they start blooming at about Mother's Day. And then they go for, oh, a couple of three weeks or something like that, or a month. They have one of the most interesting life cycles of any plant that you'd want to mention. They have uh, a symbiotic relationship with a fungus for their seeds to uh, germinate. And they have, their blossom is designed so that when a bee gets in to get some pollen, there are little hairs inside. There's only one way in and one way out. So he comes in the top, and the only way he can get out is to come out the bottom, and that way he's sure to drag pollen from other flowers right past the perfect spot. There are some big and beautiful worlds to explore on the public lands here on Delmarva, and you're already equipped. So there goes your last excuse. Get outdoors, Delmarva. Still to come on Outdoors Delmarva. It's an old time tradition that's not about to go up in smoke. Meet us out on the range with the Chop Tank Muzzle Loaders. Stay with us. Mike and Captain Willie have more adventures to come. Thanks for watching Outdoors Delmarva. I'm Mike Parker, and if I have some advice for you for this next story, it's grab your earplugs. <laughs> At least if you were here with me, you'd definitely want to do that. Because I'm hanging out with the members of Chop Tank Muzzle Loaders, a group of shooters that likes to get together and shoot black powder here on this range in Northern Caroline County, Maryland. Well, there's a little bit of a competition going on here today, but more importantly, a lot of camaraderie. It's not required, but it is highly recommended. Eye protection, especially ears. What started off a few decades ago was a couple of guys getting together to shoot the, uh, has evolved into the Chop Tank Muzzle Loaders Club. 99% of them are flintlocks. I haven't shot a shotgun since 1995. These days, the members gather about one Sunday a month to load, prime, lock, squeeze, and shoot. A firearm, it represents a way of life. It is, it is. Uh, my first interest in black powder went, goes back to the mid-50s when Walt Disney put Davy Crockett on television. I fell in love with it at that time and it, it never lost interest in it. Of course, our chat needs some work right now, but uh, it, uh, it, it served us well. She's rustic and kind of plays into our image. Though this club touts diversity, too. Membership includes everyone from self-proclaimed good old boys to doctors, lawyers, even politicians, who together share a common bond here on the range. Now, I've been shooting black powder for a few years now as a deer hunter, but today, well, this 25-yard target seems to be getting the best of me, and some others, too. Good one? Nah. How'd you do that round? Well, not real good, but uh, consistent. You missed them all. <laughs> it's all part of the sport. Flintlocks especially are prone to clicks <laughs> ah, come on. We'll go up. when moisture turns priming powder into mud. Only two. <laughs> but for some of these shooters, it's just another chance to show off. Close. 
Not close enough. And the bigger challenge becomes fending off trash talk amongst friends. How'd it go? I'm good. Got two X. How's it count on the first target, though, Jerry? Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, as friends like this, I don't need no enemies. <laughs> For today's pig shoot, something else is cooking. And after each target is scored, prizes will be awarded in the form of, you guessed it, pork. Oh, man, ham steaks, pork chops, scrapple, bacon. <laughs> as these members will divvy up a freezer full of fresh cuts as they shoot for perfection and preservation of a Delmarva tradition. So some nice shooting happening out here on the range today. And if you didn't notice, a lot of the guns being fired out here are beautiful custom creations, uh, a little bit fancier than the store-bought flintlock that I've had here myself for a few years. So coming up in a few weeks on Outdoors Del Marva, we hope to get back with the members of this club and show you the gun making side of their fun. And we'll be right back. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll do a little horsing around with a quick stop at the Salisbury Horse Show. Plus, you won't want to miss this week's Score Cheese Corner Classic. Very nice, mister. Don't go anywhere. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. Well, you know, one of the challenges of putting together a show like ours this time of year is uh, predicting the weather. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's face it, a little pop-up thunderstorm can kind of ruin an adventure, sometimes even before it begins. Well, this past weekend, some rain cut our visit short at the Salisbury Horse Show, but we did want to share some of that event with you this week. The Salisbury Horse Show is in its 24th year, and the competitors were mounted up and ready to ride at the Wicomico Equestrian Center at Winter Place Park. Now, this event featured a number of styles and different competitions, from jumping and racing to some pretty impressive horse control. In the standing ring, please blow. In the standing ring, please reverse and back up five steps. Now, this event was special this year, helping to raise money for local 4-H clubs. And more events are scheduled in the coming weekends. We hope to see you out there to support Delmarva's most talented riders. And now, it's time to visit with an old friend. Here's this week's Scorchy's Corner Classic. We were guests on the Eastern Marine. An 19-foot Grady weight owned and operated by Marcy Margolin, quite possibly the only lady skipper in the tournament. We were in a friendly pre-tournament competition with several other media members. Mostly we were drifting three-quarter ounce bucktails with a red plastic worm. When Marcy got the first strike, that's what it was on. We dearly craved to see one of the big trout Delaware Bay is noted for. Shortly thereafter, an angler aboard the Keen Lady accommodated us. Yeah, it must be the first fish of the day. A few others followed, one by a couple of anglers off our starboard bow, another held up by one of a party of four aboard Eric Burnley's boat, but we were still troutless, but still hoping. Then suddenly it happened. That's it. <laughs> Joe Harp was one happy angler, and so were we. Our host had gotten their trout, and we had gotten our story. The preliminaries were over. They'd start fishing for all the marbles tomorrow. Scorchy Dawes wandering our Del Marvelous land for WBOC News. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll put the viewer venture cam in the hands of a fisherman headed to Smith Island. Plus, we'll have your latest viewer photos. Outdoors Del Marva viewer pictures are sponsored by North Bay Marina. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Shorts Marine. Shooter's Choice, 
and Goody's Marine. Mike, people have really been getting involved with our new viewer venture cam, and we have another new video to show you this week. Yeah, Willie, when a friend of the show told us he was going to head out to Smith Island for a couple of days of fishing, well, we asked him to catch us some video, too. Oh, the sun came out. Whoa. Buddy and Jane Jenkins from Bishopville, along with Rebecca Hale from West Ocean City, set out on Buddy's boat, the I Fish, and headed from Chrisfield to Smith Island. There have been some big red drums spotted in these waters in recent weeks, and they're hoping to hook up a big one. But some stormy weather cut down on their fishing time, Willie, so still these three were able to get out on the water and locate some rockfish and a few other species. It's a shame we have to throw them back. It is. This is fishing Del Marble. Okay, now go ahead and release him back. Okay. There is nothing wrong with that. We want to say thanks for sharing the video, buddy. For our pictures this week, we start with a nice rockfish caught recently off Tillman Island. Kelly Nelson sent in this shot of her fiance, Matt Mills, with this 43-incher. As we like to say, Mike, that'll feed the family. <laughs> sure will. Ron Bowman from Lincoln, Delaware, sent in a few shots for us this week. This deer was spotted out back of Ron's sunroom, feeding by the woodpile. And while out and about a few weeks ago, he came across these turkeys gathered in a field near Bridgeville. And Micah Perty from Chrisfield sent in a picture of this great blue heron that he says visits his backyard canal just about every day. He's become such a regular visitor, he's even got a name, Charlie. Well, we love sharing your outdoors videos and photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. Just email me at mparker at wboc.com or post them on the Outdoors Delmarva Facebook page. Well, Willie, you know what? It wasn't easy this week. It rained so much across Delmarva, and as you know, flintlock muzzleloaders do not like it wet. <laughs> what about Chopper 16? Well, the visibility got pretty terrible at times, but at least I got the little bird a bath. She's looking good. <laughs> All right, Willie. Until next week, for Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Mother Nature doing your uh, work again for you, Willie, washing the chopper. I was totally out of elbow grease, so uh, to fly in the rain was just uh, the perfect thing. Looks good. Oh, you missed a spot, right? Look at that. That's a brand new bug. I didn't do that.